Legend of Total War here, and today we're doing another Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires campaign review, this time covering Luther Harkon. So Luther starts off at the Awakening, same location he had in Warhammer 2, going up against the Vampire Coast Mutineers, same enemy in Warhammer 2. So not much has changed for his starting situation, apart from the layout in Lustria has changed a little bit. It's his only enemy to begin with, so it's a very straightforward start, unlike with Lu and Leonkos, who we... Um, uh, talked about yesterday. Uh, after you've taken these guys out, you'll pretty soon after be declared war on by Lizardmen. There's also Alberic over here who'll probably declare war on you. And then soon after that, you've got um, Marcus Wolfhart out this way. So a lot of enemies to the west and north of your position. But you've also got potential allies to your south in the Skaven. Enemy of your enemy is your friend, so the Skaven can be used um, to trade with and and potentially get alliances with if you want you definitely don't need to the vampire coast is a strong enough faction to be able to handle defending this position without too much difficulty they gain a lot of money from loot so having a lot of enemies isn't necessarily a pro problem and thanks to their shipbuilding system as they continue to grow you can get some pretty good bonuses in here that will reduce your upkeep costs and just make um, recruiting a lot easier and also maintaining your army is a lot easier as well. So their economy is quite good. The shipbuilding system is quite good, but only your legendary lord and the legendary admirals will get access to the shipbuilding. Any regular lords that you recruit will not, which is fine. So they're like a semi-horde uh, slash settled faction. And then outside of the, that system, they've got their treasure maps and pieces of eight. So pieces of eight, talking about that first, there are various pirates out there, and if you defeat them, you'll unlock Regiments of Renown. Not really a huge incentive to go out there and do that, but as you gain Infamy, which is just what you'll get as you progress through the campaign, these enemies will start to come at you, but it's just not really that much of a priority. Uh, then you've got the treasure maps over here. Now, this here is kind of a bad system. It's just not... doesn't incentivize the player much in activating it. So... Every now and again, you'll get a treasure map that'll give you a rough location of where a treasure is, is buried. But oftentimes, it's not worth seeking it out because you might get between like 1,000 and 5,000 gold, which if it's close by and you get it first try, then yeah, that's pretty good. But if the treasure map is telling you to go over to the Badlands um, or to the Darklands or to Cathay, it's too far away to send your army to go and gain 5,000 gold because you, you'll easily cost that in an upkeep cost in several turns and if you send a hero that far the heroes still cost upkeep costs as well so you could end up spending 5,000 gold just getting them there and then getting them back again because you can't just disband them to teleport them back sort of like you could in Warhammer 2 if they were immortal but you can't do that anymore they'll actually be killed off so it's only worth getting the treasure maps if they're close by but this is a mechanic that you can completely ignore because the Vampire Coast is just not poor. And so you really don't need to bother looking at this to dig up you know, 1,000 to 5,000 gold. So this is a mechanic that can be completely ignored, similar to the Ogre Kingdom's contract mechanic. Just, just not really incentivizing the player to get it. Like there is nothing unique about it apart from just like getting gold. That's it. Um, you don't get any special unique items that can only be found from digging up buried treasure that would actually make it worth doing if there was like something special to be obtained but it, nothing ever shows up like that in addition to that they've got their um their pirate coves which you know that's an all right way of making a fair bit of money you can send your heroes off to ulth one set up some pirate coves make some money off them and increase your hero capacity in fact that's the only way to increase the hero capacity for the um, gunnery whites and the mongol hunters whereas the pirate captains the fleet vampire fleet captains can be increased in capacity through major ports in those areas there so, in summary, I think that the Vampire Coast is in a pretty good position. It's definitely not one of my favorite factions, nor is it one of my least favorite factions. It's somewhere in the middle. I tend to find that I get bored in my Vampire Coast campaigns fairly early on, usually around turn 50, because you sort of hit maximum potential very early on. And they have no ability to confederate the other legendary lords, and they've got, like, no landmarks around the world. And so, I find myself without any serious goals in the endgame. Um, apart from just doing this stuff over here, which you can get this stuff done very quickly. So I think that they struggle a little bit in motivation, in, in getting yourself motivated to uh, uh, to actually you know conquer the whole map. They don't give you enough to, to sort that out. But if you're looking for a quick campaign, then this is a, a good one for you. Um, I'd probably recommend playing this one 
kind of casually, not looking for a mega challenge, because they're just not really suited for hardcore sort of uh, try-hard campaigns. So playing this campaign on like hard or normal difficulty and just like messing around with silly pirate armies is probably the best way to enjoy them outside of that. It's entirely up to you. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Luther Harkon and the Vampire Coast in general, which legendary lord you'd like me to cover next. Appreciate you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.